Please try not to move. You know, if you move, it really disrupts the class. I know everybody's sitting by themselves, but you're all part of a group here. And uh, if somebody moves, it disrupts the whole energy. Does anyone have a question? Questions are good. They always had a whole dimension to the class. I have a question, Stuart. Yes, Paul. Okay. Um, sometimes you have very good meditations, and you and I. Sometimes I have very good meditations, and I seem to go deeper. Other other times, like now, I have very superficial meditations, and I cannot get out of my head. How does it, what does it mean for an evolution or a process? I mean, isn't it the more you meditate, the deeper you can go? Or, or is, it, is it with some setbacks you have sometimes or, or? Well, let's start with the setbacks you have sometimes. Every meditation mm -hmm. is not gonna be the same. It's what you bring to it. It's how open you are when you sit down to do it. Uh, it can have to do with astrological things. The stars, the planets are affecting you. Uh, your life, your economic life, your family life could be affecting you. And all of these things converge and sometimes make it very difficult to sit through a meditation class. You know, and it, but I don't think one or the other is better. We need to learn how to work with these things and how to transform them. We need to learn how to get deeper when we have these blocks and these tensions that manifest inside us. I mean, there are times I've talked about it before, I would sit down and meditate and I felt like I had a chisel cutting a tunnel through a mountain. I mean, I was so thick inside, but that tunnel that work also made me very strong because I didn't just shrug my shoulders and give up. I said, no, Stuart, this is just reminding you that you have a lot of work to do on yourself. And then it's incremental step by step by step. And even today I've been doing this meditation, God knows how long, you know, uh, I still am up against internal blocks in myself, but I don't, discard them. In fact, in many ways, I say, okay, this is what I have to work with today. How can I grow because of these energies? How can I grow because of, you know, I might be tired, I might be this, I might be that, you know, there's all kinds of reasons. But what can I do to get past it? And usually, when you have situations like you described, it often means that you're ready to really open to a much deeper level in yourself. And they're just manifestations of resistance to going there. So, you know, it doesn't matter if it's easy, it's hard, if you're this, what only matters is you use whatever takes place inside you as an opportunity to grow. And I know when I have a lot of resistance in myself, I'm usually ready to take a major step in my life. I'm ready to get a much deeper experience in my meditation and in my daily living. You know, and then there's the resistance, the change, the, you know, the familiarity with the world we live in and not wanting it to change because at least it represents on whatever level a certain degree of comfort. So we set up these obstacles, we set up these blocks. And I know when they come to me, it's always okay, Stuart, you are ready for a major step now. Don't let this stuff interfere, work through it. On the other side of this, you know, is gonna be a major opening in your life. I mean, it's like the old fairy tale of the, the prince, you know, the, 
and the, the pot of gold and the dragon has to slay the dragon in order to get to the pot of gold or to get to the damsel in distress or whatever it is that's in the fairy tale. But there's always the dragon there <laughs> has to be overcome. The dragon in the life of most people is their mind, their emotions, their sexual energy, their physical discomfort. These are the dragons. And we have to build an inner life that enables us to get past them. On the other side, there's that pot of gold. I mean, all that is is a metaphor for spiritual growth. They made it into fairy tales, you know? But it's a metaphor for spiritual growth, for growth period. So if you experience those things, it's telling you something. It's telling you, don't give it all up because in one class your mind was active. Say, well, maybe I can get my mind focused and on the other side of this, there might be a major opening for me in my life. The first thing you learn how to do is master your mind. Get your mind quiet. And, and again, there are so many influences on our lives, you know, everything, as I said, from astrological to, you know, politics, economics, this, that, the other, you know, that influence our lives and create a lot of barriers in our lives. And if we allow them to, they take over. They disrupt the entire inner flow. But if we say, okay, this is what I got to work on. I will get stronger than this. I will master this. I will open and transform this. And on the other side, you know, a pot of gold. A completely new realization about your inner self and your connection with higher energy in the universe. I hope that's clear. I mean, I, I empathize with your question because I've been through it so many times. Yes. And I had to really understand finally what this was doing to make Stuart a stronger person. Hmm. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Does anyone else have a question? Yes, uh, hi, Stuart. Yes, Larry. Can you talk about the stages of life? You know, we're often raised that we work to a certain age and then we, then we, then we retire and take it easy. Some people want to go to the beach. You know, it's, it's sort of that old paradigm. Yeah, I know, Larry. It's everything that I try to escape all my life, that <laughs> particular paradigm. To me, retiring is like dying, you know? It's like the end of your life. You wind up sitting on a, you know, on a beach chair somewhere in Miami or, you know, and, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I just don't get any of that. When I was 16 years old, I rebelled against it. I ran away when I was 18, 19 years old to Europe, you know, and I, you know, I, I kept saying, no, I'm not going to live that way. I saw my family living that way and it scared the shit out of me that I would wind up living that way when I was older, you know? So I don't know those paradigms, those borders, those things. I just do my work. I work and try to, you know, continue to work and serve God till the day I leave this world. The rest of it, I'm telling you, when I was younger, 16, man, I was so, I used to see this world that my family wanted for me. And man, I rebelled. I became a terrible rebel. And only because I didn't want that. But then I found out it wasn't because I wanted a path to God. I didn't have one when I was 16 years old. So I don't know. I mean, yeah, I'm not putting it down. That's what people are ready for, you know. 
And it's also why there's reincarnation in the world. That people come back until they're ready to do some form of profound spiritual practice. I mean, they, you know, I think in the Jewish religion, there's something many are called and few are chosen. You know, everybody's born. And in every generation, there's a handful of people that really get it. But everybody's born. Come here to learn this. And then it's money, it's greed, it's, you know, it's all this stuff that gets in the way. And all that stuff just leads to one place, and that's the grave. And I even knew this when I was 16. It used to scare the crap out of me. I said, no, I'm not going to live according to paradigms set up by people that are looking for somehow comfortable and easy way out of life. And of course, choosing the path to get to God is the single most difficult path you can possibly choose on the earth. <laughs> Because you got to do things that you'd never dream in your life you'd ever have to do. And total surrender. So, yeah, I, I understand. I've been up against this. I, you know, up until about 30 years old, I had a family that was, he's crazy, he's this, he got gurus, he, <laughs> he's traveling around the world, he, hitchhiking everywhere. I was looking, I, I truly needed a spiritual life and I was gonna look until I found somebody who could teach me how to do it. And then I found Rudy, when I was younger, I was 25. But in my family, it wasn't part of the paradigm. It was a crazy young son. I was the black sheep of the family. And then I got financially very successful. I'm living in 4,000 square foot lofts in New York City. I, I have this house in Woodstock I bought that was 7,000 square. I mean, I was making lots of money. I was very successful. It's two o'clock. So suddenly the whole way my family looked at me changed. <laughs> because they could identify with that money, you know, that I was making. <laughs> and that was great because it enabled me to relate to them and to talk to them and be with them and love them. But it took years of not wanting to fit into that paradigm. And then I, I was crazy enough and had enough guts to do it, you know? Thank you, Stuart. You're welcome, Larry. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Nothing wrong with family. I'm not anti-family. Family is very important. You know, what I'm anti is setting limitations. I'm not even anti that. Frankly, I'm not anti anything, you know? I, I just respect the way anybody lives their life. It's none of my business how people live their lives. I learn from them and it teaches me how I want to live my life, but I have no, you know, I'm not anti this and that and religion and this. And we, I mean, I've had, I mean, I remember once I was in Rudy's store and he showed this young man who was an African-American man, a meditation exercise. And he came up to me and said, Stuart, there's a good chance that if I train this young man, he will be responsible for terrorist activities in America. That's what he told me. So I said, well, what are you gonna do? He said, you know, if that's God's will, then it's God's will. I can only work with him and help to train him and maybe change him inside. You know, so all of these things are, you know, they're not for me to judge. They're for me to learn from about how I want to live my life. And then you see all these horrible things with people blowing up cities and 
people starving in deserts and living, I mean, you know, and it never stops. It never stops. Does anyone else have a question you would like to ask? I think if you do deep meditation, you open to God that energy will enable you to bring more love to your family, more, you know, energy and compassion to the people in your life. It was like my mother, you know, one day she called me up, I want to come study with you. You know, I can't tell you how, for tears to my eyes. You know, she had a tumor in her breast and she asked me, if I can do healing work with her. And I went and did it and the thing went into remission. And then she started coming to my classes. Every, every Sunday she would come and uh, the people in the meditation center used to treat her like she was the king of, you know, she was like a queen, you know, they put so much love. It was so extraordinary to see. Does anyone else have a question they would like to ask? Okay, you know, there will be meditation on Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing you all. And again, I, your being here, the questions you ask, everything that manifests in this hour is so profound for me, and it really is helping me to grow. I just have a lot of gratitude to you all. God bless you all, and I'm looking forward to seeing everybody on Sunday. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Stuart.